Good afternoon. My name is Samuel, and together with Erica and Joao, it's my great pleasure to describe our recent work on the origin of species of self-supervised learning. Our motivation for this work stemmed from the following observation. A remarkable diversity of machine learning entities can be found in the world, such as the random leaf, the random tree, and the random forest. It's important that you do not miss this for this. In this work, we took a particular interest in self-supervised learning. As a reminder, in fully supervised learning, the machine is trained by example. This approach is responsible for uncomfortably fast progress in computer vision, but it's expensive to collect labels. Self-supervised learning is an alternative approach that encourages machine autodidactism. It has major cost-cutting benefits and, of course, a more secure acronym. Few would disagree that it is experiencing something of a renaissance, but little attention has been paid to its development. Our objective is to understand the origin of species of self-supervised learning, ideally with a career-making grand unifying theory. Turning to related work, we note that while the benefits of self-supervised learning have long been known to humans, their advantages have been realized among machines much more recently. In terms of grand unifying theories, science has done pretty well with a large number of hits and a smaller number of misses. We began a focused study of variation emerging from different sources, the idealistic designs of first-year PhD students, the wild-eyed late-stage graduate student in the throes of a final thesis push, the whiz and postdocs now studying their fourth language, the industrial research scientist whose relaxed smile exudes confidence in their health insurance. The solo independent researcher, too maverick to fit inside the system, too creative to throw in the research towel. The startup warrior, battling the manuscript as the runway crumbles beneath them. And the tenure track professor, just 2.3 years away from her next night of sleep. Digging deeper, we studied fossil evidence from a number of 90s web pages and university servers which have been isolated for decades lacking any inbound hyperlinks from the wider internet. We found an abundance of variety at every turn. We propose a unifying theory to explain the evidence we've gathered. It consists of a system responsible for variation, in which we assume the standard crossover model, where new algorithms are formed by Git cloning the top two papers from papers with code, and mutations arise from inconsistent conda environments. This variation is paired with a competitive environment in which a publish or perish mentality drives the struggle for survival. Our proposed theory relies on both factors to drive speciation and diversity. To showcase the theory, we use it to simulate the development of self-supervised learning, starting from an initial collection of 11 species, and iterating forwards in time to reconstruct modern variants. We observed notable events in the generational record like open source code releases, extinctions, responsive grant bodies, and isolated research agendas. An immediate implication of our theory is that the careful conservation of a deep learning ecosystem is critical, but we face challenges. It has become fashionable among high society to collect exotic GAN variants, and many researchers believe that model zoos may encourage removals from natural habitats. It's now sadly all too common to see models born to race through ImageNet epochs on a 64 GPU cluster being confined to a cramped S3 bucket. That's where organizations like Big and Rescue can play a critical role. Operating VMs running MATLAB 2013A with vintage MatConfNet. Their work allows models to live out their days with a daily epoch on Cypher 10 and it's why we support their long-term plans for rewilding, allowing models to roam once more the open plains of the internet. Thank you very much for your attention. We're happy to answer now your questions within reason.